In this video, we are going to learn how to build a form in Angular that will allow us to upload a file into SP.NET Core. We are not starting from scratch, I already have an Angular application configured to be able to communicate with my web API. That is something that we'll learn how to do before in this same YouTube channel, so let's go from there. Aside from that, this is a normal Angular application, the only thing that I did was to clean up the app component HTML so that it doesn't have all of that code and we only put this message here. So let's get started. Let's come here. I want to install Angular material so that we can have a professional looking form. So let me say here, ng add Angular material, enter. We are going to say yes to everything. So yes here, we are going to choose the default option, Azure Blue and no here. All right, so as you can see, the Angular JSON was modified, which means that if you were running the Angular application, you need to stop it and run it again so that those changes are applied. All right, so as you can see, we have here our Angular app. You can see that we don't have much margin here. Therefore, let me fix that right away. Let me say here diff, and then in here, I will say, and by the way, let me minimize this and also this. All right, so let's put some margin on the sides. As you can see here, this is better. So let's start building the form. All right, so what I want to do is to come here and say form, and I want to connect this form to a form group. And therefore I need to come to the code behind, to the class of this component. And let me say here, private form builder. I need a form builder, inject form builder, and let me, import that. All right, so here it is. Then I need to build my form group. So form this form builder group. And my form is going to have two fields, which are going to be name and its initial value is going to be nth and it's going to be required. So validators, array, validators, required, and also a picture. So picture, this is the other field. Now let me say form control. This can have either null or a file and its initial value is going to be null. And then also I want to say here validators, validators required. All right. So now let me connect this form group to this form. So let me say here form group equal to form. And in order to be able to use this form group, I need to come here and import reactive forms module. All right, this is better. Now let me say here, submit save changes so that we can fire this function when the user submits the form. All right, so let's come here, save changes. All right, so now this works. And let me say here, math form field, a premise outline, math label name, and also input mat input for control for controls name so that this mat input is connected to my name control all right so as you can see we need to import some modules so let me say here mat button module mat form field and mat input module so let me add all missing imports now this will work and also here at the bottom i can say diff and i can say bottom mat flat bottom type submit disable form invalid send so that now if we see our form we're going to see that we have here this name field in which i can put my name and also we have this send button which is grayed out because i said here that it will be disabled if the form is invalid and it is invalid because i need to attach also a picture to this control all right so let's get to work on that now it's important to realize that in Angular Material, there is not a native control for input type file and therefore we have to build our own. What we usually do in these scenarios is to use a template variable that will allow us to reference a input type file that is hidden from a non-hidden control. All right, so let's do the following. First, I want to put here a div with some margin bottom and then I want to say here input type file. I will create my input type file, but as I mentioned, it will be hidden. So display none, I will use a template variable file input. I'll say accept image, any image, and then we're going to create a button a style with angular material styling that will use this template variable. Let's see. Let's say here, bottom type bottom, mat raise bottom, click file input this template variable click. So when I click the bottom, I'm basically passing that click into my input type file 
and that will display the model so that the user can select an image. All right, so after we select an image, I want to raise the change event. I want to react to the change event. Let me say here, image selected, and I'll pass here the event. All right, so now let's implement this. Let's come here to the class of the component, and let me say this. I'll say event, event. I need to get the target of the event, which is the input I file. So let me say here, const input equal to event.target as HTML input element. I want to check if the input has files. If it has, then I will run this code that I have here. I will say const file of type file equal to input files, the first file selected by the user. And then I will put this file into this picture control that I have here. So let me say this form patch value, we use patch value to pass some values into my form so that I can say picture equal to file, all right? But also something else that I want to do is that I want to take the image and display it into the user's browser. For that, we can use the following trick. We're going to convert it into a base 64 representation so that we can put it into an image tag. Let's see that. First, I need a function that will take a file and will convert it into base64. So file here, file here, and this will return a promise with a string inside. And then we're going to put the following code. We're basically saying return new promise, resolve reject. And then we're going to say const reader, file reader, reader read as data URL. We're going to get the file and convert it into a base 64 representation. And then we're going to say onload and we're going to invoke the result function. And we're going to pass the result as a string back to the color function, which is going to be this image selected function that we have here. And if there is an error, then we're just going to say reject error. All right. So let's come here and let me say to base 64, we're going to pass the file. We're going to say then, if this is successful, then we expect to receive a value of type string. And with that value, what we're going to do is that we're going to put it here as a property. So let me say here, image base 64, a string. All right, now let me say here, this image base 64 equal to the value. And just in case, catch, if there is an error, we're just going to say console error, error semicolon here. All right, so now what we have is that I want to take this base64 representation and put it into here, into the template. And therefore, what we're going to do is that I will repeat this code. I will repeat this div here. And I want to say the following. I will say if image base64, if this is not null, then I'm going to say image height to 50 and then source image base 64. All right, this should be good. Let me save everything, control K S and let's come here and let's see what we got. So Felipe, select image, Tom Holland. And as you can see, now we have the send button enabled. Now let's come here and let's continue working because now I need that when I click on send, we invoke this save changes function and we want to make an HTTP request to my web API so that we can send the name of the person and also their picture. So for that, we're going to use a service. Remember that a service is basically a way that we have to centralize functionality in Angular so that we can reuse it. And in our case, it is best practice to use a service to abstract the communication layer between our Angular application and our Spinal Core application. So let's come here and let me say NGGS ng generate service people because I want a people service enter and let me open my service and in here what I will do is that first I will inject the HTTP client and if you haven't done so you have to configure it so let's come to the app config ts file and let's see that in my case I already did that provide HTTP client with fetch and so I have that here so let me use it let me say private HTTP client equal to inject and HTTP client. And by the way, if you want to learn more about how to build applications with Angular and Spirit Core, buy my Udemy course today. In it, we're going to learn how to do forms like this and also communicate our Angular application with Spirit Core 
build a user system, communicate with a real database, deploy our applications, and more. Link with a discount in the description of this video. Alright, so back to the tutorial. So let me say here, private base URL, we're going to use our environment file, which we configured in a previous video. And we're going to put here a URL, and then we're going to say here people. This will be a route from a controller that we're going to build later in this video. But remember that, that we have this environment file and here we have this. And let me put by the way here, API. All right, so now let's come here and let me say public create. And here I want to get a representation of the data that I want to send to my web API. I can put that into an interface. So let's come here, right click on the app folder, new file. And let me say person models ts. And then in here, I will say export interface, interface, person creation DTO. And I'll say here, name a string and also picture file. All right. So now let's come here and let me say here, person creation DTO. In order to be able to send an HTTP request that will contain a file, we have to use form data. So for that, I will create here an auxiliary private method. So let me say here, build form data. I'll get here person, person creation DTO, return the form data. And then I will say const form data equal to new form data, then return form data. And then in here I will say form data dot append. I'll pass the name and here I will say person name and the same for the picture. So form data append picture and person picture, semicolon here. All right, now let's come here and let me say const form data equal to bill form data should have been data, not date. I don't know why it did that. So data and data here. All right. So person semicolon and then return this HTTP client post. And then I will say base URL and the form data. All right, so we're almost good to go from the Angular side of things. Let me come back to app component TS and let me inject my new service. So people service, inject people service, semicolon here. All right, so now let's come here to save changes. I want to get the information from my form and convert it into an instance of the person creation DTO interface. So let me say here, const, person equal to this form value as person creation DTO. And then let me say this people service create, let me pass the person subscribe to the observable. And then I will say here that when I get back a result, I will say console log the person was sent. All right, now that is great. We are done here in Angular. Now let's come to ASP.NET Core because we need to actually create a controller that is going to take that information and do something with it. As I mentioned before, what we're going to do is that we're going to take the image and we're just simply going to store it into the www root directory. So let's get to work on that. First, let's make sure that we have a www root directory here. And as you can see, we don't have it. Therefore, let's just create it. Add new folder, www root directory. This is a special place in which we can put a static file that we want to serve. In our case, we're going to put the pictures of the people. So let's come here to controllers. Here, as you can see, we only have the weather forecast controller. So let me create a new controller. Let me call it people controller and let me inherit from controller base control dot then route here api people this api people remember that here in angular we said that in the people service that we want to make a request to people to slash people well this is the route that we were referencing back there so let's come here and let me say http post public async task action result post. And then let me say here from form. I want to say from form because we want to receive a file and we have to use from form for that. So in here, I will put a class that represents 
the information that we want to receive from the form. Therefore, we are going to create here yet another DTO, but this one is C sharp. So DTOs here, and then right click on it, class, and let me say here, person creation DTO. And in here I will put first a name, require a string name, and also the picture. So require a form file we use I form file to represent a file in .NET. So picture. All right. So here, let's say person creation DTO, person creation DTO. And now we're going to put some logic here that will allow us to store the file in the www directory. So let me say file name subfolder, which is the folder in which we're going to store the picture. So people. And now I need to get the physical path in which that www root directory is located. For that, we can use a service. So let's come here, see Tor to get a constructor. And let me say I web host environment env control dot assign as a field. So now we can do the following. We can combine our subfolder with the directory of that www root. So let me say a store file directory equal to path combine web root path, which is that www root directory and the subfolder. And now I need to create this directory in case it doesn't exist. And therefore, let's say if doesn't exist, directory exists, a store file directory, directory create directory. If the directory does not exist, create it. Now let's say a string route, path combine, a store file directory, file name. This is the final directory in which the file is going to be stored. Now let me use a memory stream for that. So using var ms new memory stream. All right. Now I will put the content of the picture into the memory stream. We convert the content of the memory stream into a byte array. And finally, we create a file. Now, something that I want to do here is that I want to say file location equal to path combine. And we're going to combine the subfolder with the file name. And I'm going to say replace so that we replace the forward slash with the backslash. In that way, we're going to have the file location in URL format without taking into account, of course, the domain. And finally, we say return OK. So now, of course, in real life, I would put this into a service so that we can reuse it and also don't bother the controller with these implementation details. But just to keep this tutorial short, we're just going to put it here. All right, so I want to put a breakpoint here and I want to press F5 to run my application in debugging mode. Let's come here to Angular. Let me save everything and let's come to Google Chrome. And let me say here, Felipe, the image and send. And as you can see here, we are in Visual Studio. Let's see that we can see that we have the name and also the picture, tomholland.jpg, excellent. Now let's see something, let's come here. And let's see that in the www root directory, we have nothing here, right? Now, let me say F10, just to see that we create a directory. Let's see that now we have people here, excellent. And now here in people, we don't have anything. But, but if I continue executing this, let's see that indeed, we are able to create the picture here in the server. Finally, I want to see the file location so that we can test it on Chrome. So let me get this. So people, Tom Holland, JPEG, excellent. I'll copy it and let me press F5. Let's see that indeed here in Angular, if we press F12, we have that person was sent. And also if I come here to my console in which I'm running my SpeedoNet core application, control click, let me say here a slash people, Tom Holland. And as you can see, we can't see it because something that we forgot to do is that if we want to serve files from this www root directory, I have to configure a middleware for it. So let's come here. Let me say shift F5 to stop running my application in debugging mode. And let me say here, here before app use course, I'll say app use static files and then control F5. That was it. With this, we're good to go. Let's come here. Let me refresh. And here, as you can see, we have the picture of Tom Holland, which means that indeed we're able to build a form in Angular that allows us to send files into SP.NET Core. If you want to learn more about building applications with Angular and SP.NET Core, watch this video that I am displaying on the screen for you. Thank you.